Hello, ladies and gentlemen. With lockdown and working remotely to understand each other's work, I get a lot of questions about getting a website to work connected to a database. And I want to make a series, two, possibly three videos explaining some basic techniques, not basic as basic code, but basic ways to think about how your web page or your website is organized when you are trying to show information that is in a database and present it nicely, or else fill in a form and use that form compared to information that is in a database. We'll use an example throughout those videos of finding out if somebody will use an example throughout the videos about logging somebody in and then finding out if they are logged in and showing them a nice looking version of their profile. So of their personal information in a page. There's going to be two basic techniques. Uh, let me grab my pens. One is using a kind of drawing that we call a sequence diagram. It's called sequence because it's going to show what happens and what happens next. So the sequence of events. We can see red a whole lot better. And the second thing that we're going to do is uh, working out if you have a certain layout you're hoping for, a certain presentation you're hoping for, working out how to fit information that is in your database inside that presentation. So I, I want to call that from presentation to code. Code being a mixture of HTML, style sheets, etc. And with the work we're going to do, PHP, although if instead of PHP, you wanted to do Node.js or just about anything else, the ideas that I'm going to show you there will work too. Right. Interspersed with this, there will be, you know, what PHP does it take to do something like logging in? Um, and if that gets complicated, then the two videos that I'm describing here will turn into three. Okay, then using a sequence diagram first, and we're going to use a sequence diagram to plan the ideas of how do I work out what happens when someone wants to log in? What happens when they've typed their username and a password and the machine has to say, okay, you're in? Or even what happens when, they, when it says you're not in? You're probably already starting to think, okay, this has to happen, then this, then this, then this. But I want to put that diagram inside of a frame. So uh, as well as thinking we have web pages and we want to do A, then B, then C, we also have a setup where your user is sitting at their computer and their individual computer, which is receiving the information, we're going to call the client system by opposition to the website that communicates with it, that it, that the user communicates with, that is being delivered by a server software. So the client server setup is a classic one in network and you will have seen 
You will have heard of this before. But then when my user is entering, say, their, word, their password and their username and finding out if the website will let them in, that username and that password have to be compared with information that is being held somewhere. And that information is being held in a database. So we need a third thing in there. which is my database, for example, MySQL, which is often used with free servers that use Apache as a server, PHP as a programming language for servers, and MySQL as a database connected to that. What I have drawn there is what we call the three-tier architecture. First tier is my user, sitting at their computer, communicating via a network to my website, where my web server is going to deliver pages. But the website has to get its information, all the products and users and prices and all those sorts of things from a database. And the database is sometimes on the same system as the site, but often set apart, especially if the database has to run efficiently and the efficiency is not organized with the same architecture as this site. They're on small scale systems, and those of you who are working at home with an XAMPP installation, the XAMPP installation is providing to you an Apache web server plus the PHP language plus MySQL and quite a few other things. Right, inside that architecture. What would be the sequence, the successive operations that take place, say, when I visit a page and I want to log in? Right, let's go for simple. To start with, to start with, I arrive here and I want to go to the company uh, and see its web page, its home. So, I start my browser and I request the home page of the website. I'll write down which page is being requested here. Or I'm not sure which page that would be, so I'll write home page. It might be called index.html as it often is, or maybe index.php doesn't matter too much. I ask for the home page. The web server receives the request. It wakes up, it picks up the file, and it sends back a page. Some HTML, uh, and I'm going to make it easy here. There might be some images, there might be some style sheets, there might be there might be half a dozen files being transmitted, but I'll just focus on this one. This is the start of my sequence, you see. We're going to go down and down and down and down as more and more things happen. And so backwards and forwards between the user, the website, the website speaks to the database, the database speaks back, the website speaks back and down as time passes. Right, and when, they, when my user sees the home page, they see a little form, or maybe they press a button and the form was hidden and it shows. Uh, they see a little form and they fill in their username and their password. Uh, here, let's try and get an idea what's going on here. Let's draw the username and a password form here. You so they see a form to type in their username and their password and I don't know a, a button that says go or something like that and when they do
the information about their username and their password goes from the form and is sent over to check the user's login. Let's say that when they go, it goes to a web page that we're going to call login. Is that it? Well, <laughs> not really. Um, the information from the form has to be sent over so that the server has got that thing. It, the server needs to know who that is. Uh, but that information about the username and the password is, is hidden in the communication, in the headers of the communication between, H, between the user and so. So, you know, user and password filled in from the user and uh, passed over to the server. And here the server has a big job, so I drew a bit of uh, something there because it came to take uh, a good few milliseconds for the server to work out what is going on. Let me think. The server picks up this information with the username and the password, and it has to find out whether the username and the password are the correct ones. I, I could cheat at this point. I, I, I can see that I could write a web page that says that if the user is called admin, and the server is the password is is secret. Literally, those words, you know, then uh, that would be an accepted login. But if I do that, then obviously, you know, the no one will ever be able to change their password. You know, the user will always be admin, and the password will always be secret. The password would be hard coded, as we sometimes say inside the code of the web page. What I want is information about possible users and possible passwords to be stored somewhere more flexible, somewhere where new users can be added or removed or where the password can be changed or anything like that. And that is where our database is going to become useful. Oh. Okay, uh, before I decide how the website and the database are going to communicate, let's give a little bit of thought to what the database would have to have as information. So I guess I could have a special table in my database that I will call a user. And in that table, uh, there might be a few things, but there'll be at least two. One for the username that people have typed in there, and another one for their password. So uh, I'll call that name pass. We can't see a thing. I am going to redraw this table in a format that is more compact and well known of people who design databases. Instead of drawing columns and uh, rows for every table, I'll do this in a kind of more compact way by drawing like the name of the table and a list name. Password. Uh, I'll write pass W D. But in the real database, I might call it password to not get confused. Okay, now that we have decided how the database information is going to be organized, now I can decide to actually 
uh, what information has to go from here to there. We have to go to the database and ask the database, is the username and password chosen entered by the user actually a username and a password in this table? If the pair there that the user has typed up corresponds to a pair that is data in my table, then the username, then the user has entered the correct login and the correct password. And I can reply to them, yeah, okay, we know who you are, you're allowed in. If the pair doesn't correspond to the information that is in the database, then we tell them, sorry, try again. So I need to um, I need to query the database with the right kind of information there to be able to uh, to be able to obtain that data. Uh, how do I obtain a username and a password from this thing? Uh, select. Select is to obtain some data from the database. Yeah? User, uh, no, not user, sorry. User is the name of the table. Select name, pass WD. From. user. But, um, but that will list me all of the names and the passwords from, uh, fr from the table. So if I go from the website to the database asking for those, I've got a double problem. The first problem is that that might be a lot of users and passwords. The machine comes back saying, okay, here is the thousands of users on this database, which is a bit of a waste of time because I don't need quite all that. I just need to know whether this username and this password is the right, are the right one. Second, uh, if, I, if I did something like this and this extracted a lot of the information from the database and sent it back to the website, there's always a possibility that through some error on my part as coder or anything else like that, I would actually compromise the personal information that belongs to users <coughs> that is being transmitted here. So I want to actually arrange this query so that it sends me the minimal amount of information that is needed, given that I'm trying to log in this person. So select name, password from user, and to make sure that I get this user, I would use where, right, uh, name equal quote. I need something there. And pass WD. Equal, I need something else there. Right, what do I need here and here? The same username that the user has entered here and I got transmitted here would have to be here. The same password that they've entered here and I got transmitted here would have to be here. You can start to see the benefit of having a sequence diagram to do those sorts of things. I can see the different things that are happening. I can see that I need to write the HTML for a form, that this HTML has to go to a page called login.html, that it has to contain a username and a password that are being picked up 
by the at the server level and placed into this query. It's easier to see in the form of code how this query can be completed with having the right the right name of a variable here to correspond to this one and to this one. And the right name of a variable here for this one and this one. Now, what would happen if someone types their correct username and password? The query, so let's say I'm called the Joe and I, uh, my password is, is the word secret. The, uh, the query would then say select name password from user when name equals Joe and password equals secret. It would go to the database table and the database table would send back the correct username and password. Let's say it sends back Joe and Secret. Well, actually, no, this is going to get confusing. It sends back the correct username and password. Meanwhile, the server has been waiting. One of the reasons why some people dislike PHP. Meanwhile, the server has been waiting. And it picks up this information. And based on this information, it says, oh, OK, we got the username, the name and the password from the database back. That must mean that you know, the username and the password were correct, and so It's going to send back some HTML from the login page that says, you know, hello, you're welcome. We know who you are. Uh, uh, here is the last information that we, were, we, we had about you. All of the sorts of nice things you say to someone who's logged in. And at this moment, our user can start browsing. So, you know, there might be a page that tells them that they are logged in and that shows them all the sort of things that they need to be able to get things done. Is that it? What happens if someone types in the wrong username and password? Let me think. Well, at the beginning, the process is the same. So they type Joe and secret, but they make a typo. I don't know, secrets. Um, that's their username, the username and a password that has been entered. The machine picks that up. It does the same query as before. That says Joe, that says secrets with an S. And that queries against the contents of the database. But there isn't an entry, a record with the name Joe and a password secrets. So because there isn't, let me insert a, a break here in my sequence diagram. Uh, let's uh, shorten this a bit and insert a break in here. Because there isn't, it goes into an alternative thing where the database is not replying with a username and a password. It replies with, look, there isn't any data. 
because there isn't a your name and a password. So, you know, it comes back with zero rules of information for that username and that password. Okay, so we're still pursuing this whole thing, except that we're seeing the end of this, uh, uh, of this process, but it's the altern in an alternative case. And it comes back, it's, it's the login page, but this time the login page comes back saying, uh, well, no, sorry. It's still some HTML code, but it will show something like, uh, I don't know, try again. User password. Right, where are we? In that plan, we've spotted that we are talking about a home page followed by a login page. So that's two web pages. The login page does all this job of checking the username and the password and everything. But depending on whether the username and the password are correct or not, it comes back showing either of two different things. So the login page has to be written with some kind of select statement that will show either hello you're logged in if we have found a username and password for the person or sorry try again if we found out that no. Is that, is that everything we need to know? It's enough to understand how this thing is going to work overall. We have a structure in terms of what we need in the database, what we need in, uh, 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 in, in PHP, which pages we need, how they are coded, what we need in HTML, a home, a password, and the two alternatives when people have typed their password in. And we found out how to use a sequence diagram to work out these sorts of uh, these sorts of things. Now, if faced with something like this, but with new information, maybe not always the classic kind of thing that so many people do with logging in, uh, but with you know processing other uh, other information, it's very much worth drawing those sorts of things. Draw them and redraw them. Number the items that happen in the, uh, in the sequence. Draw them, start coding, and when you start coding, change your mind. And if you have to, redraw them. There is a much more formal, much stricter version of those sequence, sequence diagrams that I'm drawing here. Uh, but I'm interested in keeping it practical. So I hope you find this, found this useful. Uh, start planning, start thinking your own, uh, your own things. And I will join you soon for another video where we will look at how that becomes code.